Welcome to Better Than Ever Live, wherever you're watching or wherever you're listening. Hope you're making today your masterpiece. On today's show, we're going to talk about exosomes, what they are, how they might work. Then we're going to look at their use and how they might potentially help for a patient with a rotator cuff tear. My name's Dr. David Geyer, triple board certified orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist, anti-aging and regenerative medicine expert, and media medical expert. I help you feel and perform your best regardless of age, injury, or medical history. As always, please understand in today's show, in the live stream, really any of my, of my videos online or on my website, I'm not giving you medical advice. This is meant for general information and educational purposes only. I'd love to hear from you if you have thoughts as we talk about this, about the paper we're going to talk about, about exosomes, about rotator cuff tears. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't leave your message in the comments. Leave it in the chat and I can try to answer that. Uh, same with Facebook and LinkedIn. You guys are welcome to comment. Uh, if it's about exosomes, rotator cuff tears, I'll uh, put it on the screen and try to answer it or address it. I'd love for you to give your first name and where you're located along with your comment or question. Any other questions you might have, orthopedic questions, surgery, injury, rehab, recovery, whatever it is, join us tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern time for Ask Dr. Geyer Live. Ask Dr. Geyer Live, I can't talk. And I'll answer those questions. So we're going to talk about rotator cuff tears and specific, specifically it is one of those afternoons I guess the potential for exosomes to help them heal. This was a study that was published in the Journal of Bone and Mineral Metabolism out of Creighton University School of Medicine. Now to be fair this is a review article. This is not a randomized control study where they take one group of patients and give them a treatment like exosomes, one group of treatment that's identical in every other way other than they get a placebo. It's not that type of study. This is a review article looking at other studies and mostly bio uh, or um, basic science studies, lab type studies, mechanisms of action for rotator cuff tears and exosomes. First of all, let's start by talking about what the rotator cuff is. It's a group of four muscles and their tendons that basically are play a crucial role in the strength and stability of the shoulder joint. What I tell patients is the rotator cuff is a series of muscles that come off the shoulder blade, uh, three in the back, one in the front. Uh, they travel under the tip of your shoulder blade, what's called the acromion, and attach to the ball of the ball and socket joint. What that rotator cuff does is it basically holds, those tendons and muscles hold the ball in the socket while the bigger muscles reach up overhead, out away from your body, and behind your back. So people with a rotator cuff tear, people with rotator cuff impingement have pain with those motions up overhead, out away from the body or behind the back. People with a tear a lot of times have weakness uh, doing that type of thing. These are one of the most common injuries that occur in shoulders, at least as they pertain to orthopedic surgery. They cause pain, they cause weakness, they reduce your ability to do certain activities, reaching up overhead. Um, I remember my mom uh, tore her rotator cuff and her big point, uh, complaint, because she used to travel a lot for work, was getting the bag in and out of the overhead compartment in planes. But it gets to where it really affects your daily life and your daily activities. Sleeping is really difficult. I thought it was interesting in this study they talk about in the US, there's about 270,000 rotator cuff repair surgeries performed every year. I would have actually guessed it was higher, uh, but the reason that's so common, and I did hundreds and hundreds and so many of those surgeries in my 16 years of traditional orthopedic surgery, is that medications like Advil or Aleve, anti-inflammatory medications, cortisone shots, physical therapy, don't get the rotator cuff to heal. That doesn't mean there isn't a role for something like physical therapy. Clearly there is, but getting that tendon to reattach to the bone, those don't typically do it. Now, another thing that's important to know is that when you're doing a rotator cuff repair surgery, again, usually in a younger, not young adult, but younger adult, 40s, 50s, that's gonna be fairly active, typically you fix rotator cuff tears surgically so that they get their strength back and that muscle doesn't atrophy and it gets to where it's not repairable anymore. But one of the issues is after surgery, the repair struggles to heal. That rotator cuff tendon doesn't have tons of 
of cell and its cells and it's sort of limited in its ability to regenerate tissue. What happens is a lot of times scar tissues lay down at the site of healing, which is a major factor for a fairly high re-tear rate. Uh, that scar tissue has really weak mechanical properties. Some studies say it's as high as close to 50% within two years. 50% of rotator cuff repair surgeries fail at two years. Doesn't mean people aren't doing a little bit better than they were before the first surgery. And most uh, surg uh, papers that have come out in the last decade or so have had lower numbers than that. But rotator cuff repair surgeries still have a fairly high re-tear rate or recurrence rate. So a, a number of studies in recent years have begun to look at stem cells, what are called mesenchymal stem cells, to try to promote regeneration of a variety of tissues. Uh, but we're going to talk here about rotator cuff tears. Stem cells are found in pretty much every tissue. And mesenchymal stem cells are great because they can renew themselves and differentiate into all different types of cells. Chondrocytes that make cartilage, tenocytes that make tendons, osteoblasts that make bone. Now you can get mesenchymal stem cells from bone marrow, you know, harvest it from the hip, from adipose tissue, umbilical cord blood, Wharton's jelly, synovial fluid. And there are some studies that show that mesenchymal stem cells do potentially improve the healing of a rotator cuff repair. Now let's get to what we were going to talk about today exosomes. You may have heard of exosomes, you may not have. They're what are called extracellular vesicles that are released by a variety of different stem cells, but in the, or a variety of different cells of all types, but for our purposes we're talking about stem cells, whether it's bone stem cells, cartilage stem cells, tendon stem cells, and so much more. What they are is basically vehicles for communication between cells. They transfer messages with proteins, lipids, messenger RNA, microRNA, and it's thought that exosomes actually regulate the, a lot of the biological processes, cell proliferation, cell migration, angiogenesis, or development of blood flow, uh, blood vessels to an area which could help a tendon injury heal like a rotator cuff. What that means is, and the way I describe it to patients, what exosomes are, and to people who ask me what exosomes are, is there are the internal messengers inside of a stem cell that are released that basically do the work. They create the chemical reaction by sending signals with DNA, RNA, messenger RNA, microRNA proteins to cause cell proliferation, cell differentiation, migration, uh, things like that. I don't know if this is a perfect analogy, but it's one that may make help this make sense. So imagine you have two pieces of wood that you need to fasten together. And you have a hammer and you have a nail. The hammer I would say is the stem cell, the nail is the exosome. Now again, normally the exosome is inside the, the stem cell, but you get the point. The hammer is delivering the exosome, which is actually doing the work of holding the two pieces of bone together. So there's a lot of thought that exosomes are actually how stem cells do their thing and promote healing and cell growth, uh, cell repair, tissue repair for all sorts of ideas. Again, that's still something people are trying to figure out, but there's more and more thought that, that exosomes are, are key to how stem cells work. Now again, rotator cuff tears, when you fix them surgery, they tend to have a lot of scar tissue that forms at the surgery site, at the repair site, which is partially responsible for the high tear rate. The thought is that what the exosomes, those mediators that they're releasing, lead to revascularization of that tendon after repair. You get better tissue perfusion, better wound healing, hopefully lower chance that that repair re-tears. Now there isn't a lot of research on exosomes for rotator cuff healing specifically, where you still have a long way to go. We have a lot of long way to go with research on exosomes generally, but in other studies, they've been shown to play a role in skin wound healing and scar formation. A lot of roles in osteoporosis, where I care about osteoarthritis, and we're gonna do a, a better than ever live show about that sometime soon, exosomes and osteoarthritis, but a lot of research coming out about that. Even increasing what are called myoblasts, or the cells that form muscle. And again, a lot of people think that how mesenchymal stem cells work is at least somewhat related to their ability to secrete exosomes. Now, the question gets to what's the best method of delivering exosomes if we're gonna say, hey, this may be helpful, how do you deliver them to promote 
healing of the rotator cuff repair. Do you inject it directly into the shoulder and directly put the needle right at the repair site? Do you put it on a material like a biological scaffold so that that potentially forms a healing structure? Could you, I don't know, give it through IV fluid where it goes throughout the body and to sites of injury, in this case, your shoulder? Is there some other way? Can we uh, manipulate the, the exosomes so that we can add various medications to be released by the exosome. Maybe something, and again, I'm just sort of throwing this out there, maybe something like adding BPC so that they release BPC at the injection site. Yeah, I would say you could probably just insert BPC into the shoulder, but that, that's a whole other, but something like that. Could you manipulate the exosomes to add more growth factors and cytokines that improve rotator cuff tendon healing and limit retear. So the authors in their review of the basic science found a couple of things that they think, a few things that they think are important in this discussion. One, ruptured supraspinatus tendons, and the supraspinatus is one of those four rotator cuff muscles and tendons, the one that's most likely to tear. When those tendons rupture, you have degeneration of the college, uh, collagen and dis, uh, disordered arrangement of the collagen. I always explain this uh, to patients as those of you that are old enough to remember the game pickup sticks, when you drop the sticks on the floor and they're all over the place in all random alignment, that is not how you want the collagen to be. That is very mechanically weak and it very likely fails. You want it longitudinally arranged with cross links and things like that. So one of the things that's really important is aligning those collagen fibers in a way that forms strong tendons. Now, there's also um, a reduction in fibroblast production, which is what develops the inflammation tissue, the scar tissue that turns into collagen, that turns into tendon. There's a decrease in that fi fibroblast production. So maybe either using mesenchymal stem cells or their exosomes helps with increasing fibroblast activity by delivering growth factors to that area. I think that's gonna be, uh, remains to be seen. Again, there's a couple studies that show that stem cells can uh, basically lower the rate of retear of rotator cuff issues, but there's problems with stem cell use in the United States that I'll talk about. Exosomes have been shown to increase that synthesis of collagen and increase angiogenesis, formation of new blood vessels, uh, which again would potentially be very helpful after surgery for a rotator cuff tear. They reduce scar formation because they upregulate upregulate, sorry, what's called uh, transforming growth factor beta and matrix metalloproteases. They enhance cell proliferation. They upregulate osteoblasts, which are the cells uh, that form bone. For other orthopedic problems, and again, we'll talk about this uh, soon, but exosomes seem to enhance proliferation and migration of chondrocytes, the cells that make cartilage, slowing the progression of early osteoarthritis and preventing articular cartilage damage in the knee. They may be the underlying reason stem cell treatments might work. But again, so you might have just the same results if you did exosomes as opposed to stem cells without some of the issues with stem cells. And when we talk about stem cells in the United States, it's not that stem cells potentially don't work. It's that we get stem cells from bone marrow, you know, harvesting it from your iliac crest or from fat, but there aren't that many stem cells in that aspiration, either the bone marrow or the fat. It's really small. It's about one in 10,000 of the cells. I've seen studies out of uh, HSS, Hospital for Special Surgery, I think it was Scott Rodeo that did the study, that like one of those aspirates, they draw this bone marrow and there may be 100 or 300 stem cells in it. And what you'd really want ideally is millions of stem cells. So the number of viable living stem cells that you get from that and then are delivered into where you inject them isn't very high. What you would want is to take those stem cells, send them off to a lab for isolation and expanding them from a few hundred to a few million, but you can't do that. The FDA does not allow that here in the United States. It's not that those procedures don't work. It's just that it's probably not the few hundred stem cells that are doing anything, but other factors uh, inside that bone marrow that may play a role. I remember uh, if it was Dr. Rodeo or somebody, I remember said that shouldn't be called stem cell treatments. That should be basically connective tissue treatments because that's basically what you're getting. Having said that, that's why if you go to clinics outside of the United States uh, you know, that do stem cells where they are allowed to culture them, uh, maybe the results are a little bit better. This might make 
Exosomes are potentially more appealing option because you can generate them in much more, much larger quantities and yet yeah, potentially more successful. Again, I am not promoting anything as far as this goes. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm not telling you not to do it. Exosomes are still considered experimental by the FDA. You should know that. Um, this is just meant to give you information about what it is because it's, if it's something you've heard from friends or wherever and you want to go talk to a doctor about it, you want to know as much as you can uh, going forward. Otherwise, it sort of defeats the purpose. All right, if you have any thoughts on that or have any questions, comments about rotator cuff tears or exosomes, feel free to post those. While you're doing that, uh, we'll kind of wrap up here. If you like videos like this where we're going to talk a lot about what what I call anti-aging orthopedics, non-surgical treatments for orthopedic injuries and getting back to feeling and performing your best regardless of age or injury, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Ring the bell to be notified whenever I release a new video or live stream, subscribe on all the different uh, social media channels that you see there. Now, remember, if you have say a rotator cuff tear or you have some other kind of injury and you would like to see somebody that really knows about not just bone and joint injuries but also somebody that knows about a lot of these alternative treatments innovative treatments i'd love to talk to you about all your options to recover from injury not just surgery cortisone shots physical therapy i'm a triple board certified orthopedic surgeon sports medicine specialist and anti-aging regenerative medicine expert in the description below you'll see a link to my website drdavidgeyer.com go to the contact page, fill that out. My assistant will get back to you and work on setting that up. Again, if you have an orthopedic injury question, surgery, recovery, rehab, join me tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and Gary, uh, Gary, I guess, uh, join me uh, tomorrow. That's where I do all uh, questions about injuries, medical problems, that kind of thing. So join us for that. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, Better Than Ever Live. Uh, and uh, you can listen to this if you can't join us live. I'd love to have you there. All right, that is all I've got for you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern time, if you have an orthopedic question. Otherwise, I will see you right back here very soon for Better Than Ever Live. Have a fantastic rest of your day.